you're you. good. Uh, pronouns? He, him. Okay, just wanted to make sure. All right. Let me get no you problem. up here. All right, all right, all right. So I think we might be operating on different definitions of electoralism, um, but uh, but uh, let's l why 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 do you think that that surrounding the capital and and protesting until your your elected representatives who refuse to do anything are forced to make radical changes to the system or else continue to be surrounded and not and and not be able to sleep or rest or work peacefully? How do you think that that is? Electoralism. You're still putting faith in your elected representatives. That's like, by definition, electoralism. You're you're you know putting your faith into the government to force a change, even if the means of doing so, um, are through basically calling in. You know that's still electoralism. Well, wait. Do you think that? Um, okay, so let me ask you this: Do you think that the only way to um god i don't want to get this tos but like do you think that the only way to um like get up to like force a politician's hand is to like literally bonk them because i would argue that like politicians right now electoralism would be okay in four years you vote for the budget amendment and then that will go up to your representative your representative will take it to the house of representatives and then they'll pitch it and then it'll get shot down or blocked by mitch mcconnell and then going to the capitol and saying we refuse to go home we refuse to unclog the streets until you give us what we want or we won't vote you back in we will remove your ability to have power we'll you know blockade the streets around that that to me is not electoralism like forcing the hand of your politicians when um they're basically hiding between behind procedure um and and technicality is not electoralism in my opinion i think that your definition of electoralism would mean that there's only one option and that option is one that we can't talk about without getting tos'd and I don't think that's true. I think peaceful protest has had success in the past. But that's not, by definition, a revolution. Is it not? Do you think that Gandhi did not have a revolution? I think it's a little bit more complex than that. Do you especially... think that the civil rights well... movement wasn't revolutionary? I think it was. Was he working in the means of the system uh really was mlk break? no i mean again mlk literally they literally blockaded washington and and said we will not leave until you give us what we want damn the rules find a way to make it happen and they did because they were scared of the results not that they were going to be killed but they were scared of the fact that oh my god we're going to have every african-american person in in america standing on our doorsteps shouting at us and 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 jeering at us and hating us and and saying bad things about us all day for the rest of our lives if we don't give them what they want the the difference for mlk though is the fact that at the state level uh segregation wasn't full, like was no longer implemented Mented statewide, okay. meaning that some states no longer had segregation where others didn't. Man, and in that, that, doesn't, that path, doesn't change the the. Then, Sorry, go ahead. It's that path forward. It's saying that um, these other states have, you know, provided an example of what's what should be, what you know, they're setting an example for other states, and that's what led to a. Um, you know, the amendments come in place saying this is our right and we should not have it abolished. You know, states have already proven it to be true. So uh, why wouldn't we want it throughout our country? I mean, I don't think that that uh, affects the argument at all, whether it's ha whether certain things have happened elsewhere. I mean, that was inside the U.S. state that was done through electoralism. Yeah, but what? Okay, certain ones were, but there are certain things that there are certain, again, I, I believe there are some electoral victories that can be won, but certain ones are not going to be able to, and some of those are going to have to be from non-electoral results. Uh, you don't, a protest on the Capitol that results in 
in, 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 in a level of pressure that forces politicians to make a change, in my opinion, is not the same as like passing up a vote through all the special legal channels and waiting and seeing and then voting again four years later. Those aren't the same. Like these are like this is the, the, the core debate about anti -ele electoralism versus anti electoralism is how well the electoral system functions. And my argument is that it doesn't function at all. And therefore, we are it, it does function at certain times, but very, very limited. And it's mostly used to waste everyone's time and keep people waiting for help. And that if you go and you pressure and you make your voice, your voice literally heard your with your voice, that you can actually make these people move past the uh, ex in institutional excuses that they have for not giving you what you desire. Now, I, I recognize there are some people who literally believe that the only answer is the is like uh, a violent answer, but I don't believe that's the case. Uh, I don't believe that the only way to force someone's hand is through violence. Uh, I think that you can um, make uh, enough noise like in so many ways. Um, and I think, um, I, and again, I don't think I'm alone in believing this. I think like a lot of people who've been out on the streets during the George Floyd protests, um, in fact, probably a majority um, believe this as well, that, uh, that peaceful protest is nonetheless direct action. Direct action isn't just like literally throwing a brick at somebody. It's like, uh, it's when you make your voice heard directly, even if that means like yelling in the face of the king, if that's the system that you live in, until the king gives you what he wants or it gives you what you want. I think that those are those are ways of wielding power. I think there are all kinds of social power. Now, I think there are some people who will never do it, but consider this. Um, if you have a, um, a politician who is stonewalling you completely and you make a PR nightmare for him to the degree that it literally changes the public view of this politician, that politician might lose their power. And that is not because you voted them out. It's because you made a loud enough noise that people who then had a chance abandoned them i don't think that's an electoral like i don't think that's electoral that makes um, sense yeah so uh, the the protests especially nowadays mm -hmm. um, the main point is to stop the um manufacturing of consent in the media it's to um mm -hmm. break system of media which is already introduced and that is an existing system well, it's not just so, that yeah no it's pretty much just that it's to, that's how blm got such good approval ratings was through the, ever the media constantly talking about the protests over the summer that's how this happens this happens through breaking the um manufactured consent of the media system mm -hmm. that's okay. that's I mean, I think like, that's a big part of it. Yeah, I don't think it's the only purpose, but yeah, I do think it's a, I do think it's a big part of it. Um, the, and and and, and, and so um, what? Um, how is that? I, how is that electoral? We all recognize that the manufacturing of consent is a huge part of how the state maintains control, right? Like a huge yeah. part. So then, and by and by changing that fact is you know then you're able because um sorry sorry um if I'm stumbling over my own words. You're fine. Don't worry. Um, you good? Sorry, you, you yeah, cut yeah. out there for a second. Sorry, I um I I just lost my train of thought. No, that's fine. You were saying um, um you were saying uh br you know breaking the cycle of the media um manufacture of consent. that that's still um it, you know not to use overturned like um or overused uh cliches you're you're basically you know, like you're waking people up you know okay. beforehand it was a non-issue for many voters especially for marginalized minority groups um where they don't have a uh, enough of a vote to matter uh -huh. however if you're able to get you know your voice in front of the media then you're able to electorally challenge these people because before what happened was these minority groups were you know being marginalized and no one in political like politically through electoralism cared because their voter base was too small so by by amplifying these voices you are um, making the politicians you know squeal and run with their tail in between their legs uh -huh. to make this an issue across america yeah this is why along the debate stages you know for presidency 
one of the biggest issues was talking about BLM and Antifa. Mm -hmm. This is that's the reason why that's it's success, not success though, isn't it? That's that yeah, it's a yeah. success through electoralism. But that's it's not just electoralism, an issue. though. Here's the thing. Like, okay, I think I've maybe identified where 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 we're missing one another. Do you believe in democracy? Of course. Okay, so if you believe in democracy, then there is an electoral system that you believe can function correctly, or maybe not an electoral system because. But there's some sort of democratic system that you believe in, right? You're not – you don't believe there should be no system of society whatsoever, right? Uh, to a degree. Okay. Like th there's obviously some systems which it's very difficult to imagine without. However, it's other systems, it's very visible to be able to see that, you know, it's not necessary. Like oh, – well, okay. So, like, when I think about – um, electoralism I think about it with the with in regard to what exists now because I think that's what matters like there are I don't believe that like for example in a like anarcho syndicalist society I don't believe I would be an anti electoralist anymore because at that point the system would have changed to the degree that it doesn't resemble what we are talking about now um, I would believe that, hey, we've built a much better society and there's probably really good ways in which we can more accurately express ourselves through whatever system we have set up. And what I'm saying is that uh, changing the system right now sometimes means uh, applying pressure in such a way that people are willing to do changes that they otherwise wouldn't have, which fundamental, which can fundamentally change the system in the way that it works. I don't think that's electoralist. I don't think it's electoralist to say, hey, uh, we should pressure these politicians and give them one way or another, poli publicly, politically, uh, or otherwise, no choice but to listen to the desires of the people who are making the demands. And that if they cave into those, well, then they have now changed the system. Now, there might be a situation in which it is literally impossible. There might be certain things that are, uh, like, impossible to, uh, to um, you know, um, resolve peacefully. I do believe that there are some things that cannot be resolved peacefully. Um, but I don't know what those things exactly are, and it's not in really— In a video game, of course. Well, I mean, no. I mean, I don't even think we need to say in a video game. I think that there are some some things that are—I mean, I don't think it would have been possible to resolve, like, World War II peacefully. Like, especially as a, if you were a European. Like, if you're, like, French, like, how are you going to resolve, like, an encroaching fascist nation peacefully? You can't. It's not possible. Um, you have to fight back to something like that. Now, uh, I don't know— there are probably certain circumstances in which that's the case here in the United States, but I think in general, um, we can do these things because we live in a state that is so focused on media, that's so cultural, especially now in the age of the internet, um, like the way people act and what they demand and what they, uh, what they, the, the, the social pressures and the cultural pressures they apply are more important than ever. And that means I think that peaceful protest is actually incredibly effective for getting these changes through changes that can't get, that can't be voted on because they won't let you vote on them. You know what I mean? It's not about you doing your civic duty and clocking in and pressing the buttons that they let you vote for. It's about saying, no, you're not even putting this on the ballot. So we're going to take it straight to Washington. We're going to go to Washington and we're going to stand outside your office and shout at you until you make it possible, either until you quit your job and somebody else takes your place who's willing to listen to us, or you put the thing that we want on the floor. And then if, if anybody votes that down, we'll go protest them too until you make them make the change that you need. That's, I don't think that's electoralism. Now, uh, depends on how far you go. If you're like a hardcore, you know, if you're really, really, uh, really, really into the Soviet aesthetics, maybe you think that um, we should just skip that first step or and just, you know, bring out the Kalashnikovs. But that's not my approach. And I don't think that it's electoralism to say that like, um, like, I would you call it like, would you call like, Pe like peasants like s circling the the like like if peasants like circled the castle of their lord and the lord was like trapped inside and then gave a concession and gave them exactly what they wanted um and like yielded his position and said fine i'm 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 
I'm stepping down. Like, just don't tear me limb from limb. Like, don't don't get any angrier. Don't don't do anything. I'll, I'll give it up. Here's all the bread that you want. You can own your lands. Do you not think that that is an, an like a non electoral victory? Like, because they forced us. Like, like, do you see what I mean? Yeah, except for that's a little bit of a fantasy, especially if you want to look at the mark. You know, the the Marxist critique. Um, if you'd look at the, the transition from um, a feudalist society towards capitalism, you know, especially in France, mm -hmm. after the main revolution, the French Revolution, you'd you still see a lot of you know, basically the rich or the powerful keep their power even after you know, a non electoral revolution. That's not what you see. I mean, yeah, because I mean, I think that was a. I mean, I think Marx has plenty of critiques of the of the bourgeois revolution that was the French Revolution. The French Revolution was didn't they didn't even aim to remove the economic power of most of the elites. They just removed some of their political power. You know what I mean? Like the nobles oftentimes just maintained their economic power and were just stripped of basically titles. And I wouldn't be, I don't advocate for that type of change. If we're going to go in, I mean, not always, there might be times where some like small changes like that are valuable and important, but I would argue that we need to push harder than that. We need to push for meaningful changes, changes that are systemic. And those are hard. Um, and I think there might Hello, be, demonic there, mother. Um, okay, when is the next season of America going to start? It already has your Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, but, uh, I, I think that, um, uh, I, I think that there are, there may perhaps in the future be some, uh, irreconcilable issues. Um, like I think that like, I don't know, I think we came pretty, pretty goddamn close with Donald Trump. I mean, if Donald Trump had succeeded in like, in like preventing the, the democratic like vote from going through, I think that you're, we're at a point where there's no other choice, but to sort of fight. And that sucks, but I would like to avoid that that as much as possible because that's not a nice, um, that's not a nice outcome, and it's not even not a nice outcome. It's like a horrible outcome that mostly harms marginalized people. I think that we can. I think that we have a lot of um, things that we haven't been trying because we get lulled into this idea that you can go every four years and actually make your your voice heard by the current electoral system, but it doesn't actually do that. Like but everything between first past the post to um, the endless. Uh, you know, endlessly arcane laws that nobody actually understands and nobody knows how to vote for anything because it's just deliberately designed to be so confusing that the average person can't navigate it. I think we can make changes to those things that would be very major, but I think they're going to have to be, they're going to have to take action from people being willing to say, no, I'm not going to wait and vote in four years. I'm going to go protest outside of my governor's house today and we're going to make them mad until they give us what we need. I don't think that's electoralist at all. It's basically just saying surrender or we'll make your life hell. Even if it uses the media, but it's a fact of, of American life that the media is a huge part of American life. Like, I mean, I, I, I don't, I think there are some like genuinely like completely sociopathic politicians, but I think most politicians like, um, like a lot of politicians, if they were just, if every single day they woke up to a bunch of people yelling at them and jeering at them and saying insults, and then they go and turn on the news and the news is just reporting on how everyone hates their guts, um, that that's going to intimidate and actually like ruin the lives. Like, I don't want to say ruin the lives, but it'll make their lives not comfortable, but it's peaceful. It's still peaceful. It's just aggressive. So yeah, those are my thoughts on it. I don't think that's electoralism personally. It used, I, I guess this comes down to the, uh, you know, a lot of it might just be semantics. However, uh, you still have to have a candidate that you, um, that's willing to listen. And that's why you see, um, especially on, on the, the state level, when these right wing groups, you know, do a quote unquote protest or insurrection or whatever you want to call it, they don't go, oh, you know, we should listen to you. You know the reason why they don't do that is because they're they're mainly democratic leaders, and you you see that on the um on the Republicans because their voter base is agreeing with them, um. So so they'll go along with it. So instead of um. 
Well, the um, Republicans also show up with guns because they're fascists and they are okay with killing people. And I mean, that's wait. So protesting with guns is is it makes it fascist? Uh, no. But when you show up with thirteen dudes and your goal is to kidnap and kill the uh, governor of Michigan or wherever that was that that happened, or when you bust in the walls of the of the um of the Capitol building and smear your shit all over the walls, and you have the uh, you know fucking uh plastic restraints that you intend to use to kidnap Nancy Pelosi, like yeah, that's pretty wild. That's pretty. You know, I mean, they're clearly willing to go to extreme ends that uh, I I don't sign off on. I think that's pretty fucked. You know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like, w we have uh, we have different tactics because, like, you can't just I don't know if you uh, I don't know. I very much believe that the like. The, the 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 way that you get there is important like uh because like for example i mean this is why i'm not a stalinist right if i was a stalinist i would be able to just say i'm not quite sure about that i've seen some threads saying yeah, otherwise oh, yeah yeah all right table knife i get you yeah i know some people think i am but um yeah if i was a stalinist then i would just say oh yeah um why don't we just pick our own strong man who will kill anyone who disagrees with them march into the capital and you know plow down the u.s military or something like that um, but i don't think that tactic works i don't think it will work i don't think it produces the type of society that we desire for Try donating through site gg I yeah. Don't want yeah. To I so, agree. yeah yeah this is why i don't think it's elect i don't think I, I i guess i guess at the end of the day it is kind of it is somewhat of a semantic disagreement which is what i was trying to explain but it's a little bit difficult sometimes is that i think that like um like i think it, the word electoralism becomes meaningless if you use it to define um like anything that ever has to do with any elected official ever you know like i would think that like a, a crowd of people surrounding the president and going we fucking hate you and look at how many of us there's t 60 000 people here or whatever you want to say a million people here all screaming down your throat um like like all of those like if that's electoralism well then i guess electoralism is just about everything and i don't think that that's the case i don't think that's a useful definition of electoralism is all i'm saying but i can understand what you're trying to say but i just don't think it's a useful definition of electoralism at the end of the day does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah. um uh okay yeah fair enough um, I mean, I do think there's probably going to be, uh, again, I think we're, we're in for some really tough times in these coming years. Um, but, uh, I like to believe, and, uh, I hope that it's the case, um, that these sorts of things can be done as peacefully as possible. But I recognize that, you know, a lot of times we're going to be going up against some pretty bloodthirsty motherfuckers. And if those people are going to kill in the name of their system, uh, we're going to have to do some hard thinking about whether we can whether people are willing to like die in the name of peaceful protest or w whether they're going to fight back. But I don't believe in like, I don't believe that I don't believe in like strong man theories of approach. I'm not a Stalinist. I don't believe that like we should just find our own fascist to bash down the doors, but he'll be a red fascist. And then we can worry about getting rid of him later. I think that's a really dangerous setup, you know? Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, Another way of looking at it too is, uh, you know, all of you know, doing all of this is to eventually get power within the state, whereas a revolution or an anarchist position might be um, power outside of the state. You know, doing things um, other than just a protest to get to end up with you know state power. Um, yeah, Where I just think that, like, it's hard to do out. that right now. Like, we, we live in, a, again, we live in a very different era than we, than, like, even the the last, you know, recognizable anarchist or, or, or communist revolutions. Like, we don't, we, we live in a time of, like, a damn near panopticon and the, the ability of the government to communicate instantly and have such overwhelming force that, um, you know, that, like, even with a highly even with a heavily armed like citizens militia or vanguard militia or anything like that what are you gonna do you're just gonna get drone struck 
So it's like, I, I don't know. Um, like, I, I feel like we have to rethink that and we have to get smarter. We need to fight with information. We need to fight with um, mass public sentiment. We need to fight with messaging and with education um, because when it comes down to raw, like military power, no one stands a, cha a chance. I mean, the United States military can literally detonate the planet like 30 times over. And like, that's really difficult. I think that building independent power in this system is challenging. I think it's possible, but I think that we're going to have to, uh, you know, to, to steal some, some anarchist theory words here. I think we need to get the preconditions there. And I think sometimes that's going to require us, um, recognizing uh, identifying and recognizing that there are key elected officials who do hold levers of certain power and we can uh we can pressure that in a certain direction um to a certain degree that set, st sets up more uh you know meaningful preconditions for us to be able to build our own things and there's so many restrict there's so much that just stops right now uh like like any sort of of I don't even know how to put it like community organization. Like, I mean, imagine this, like, imagine if, if, if like, uh, I mean, this is something I'm just like pulling it out of my hat right now. Like, like imagine if, uh, there was like a, a really bad incident with the cops. I mean, you, you know, you were just, I think you were like, in, like following this shit right in, in Tacoma. Yeah. Like there's a really yeah. bad incident with the cops. Well, what if that turns into a giant protest that leads to like, your local officials offices being like uh like surrounded and then they they get so exhausted that they resign so that they can so they can get people off their back and then somebody else comes in who says hey we're going to in order to appease so this crowd will calm down and go away we're going to make it illegal to like i don't know do homeless sweeps or something like that like something like that that's like conceivable um, that a politician could do, but that would allow for, oh my God, this allows us to build like, a, like communities that can self, you know, that, that are not going to be, uh, crushed every month, um, by the, the highly armed state police. You know what I mean? Um, like those are the sorts of things that we, like, we can't just like snap our fingers and have an anarchist society, like not even anarchist theorists, even not even a revolutionary anarchist theory theorists believe that you have to have certain preconditions. And that doesn't mean that you have to like sit there and wait and vote and do, do, do. I just think that like, we have to recognize that like some solutions will require, uh, will require us to like wedge, wedge ourselves in and make those spaces first. Because like as it stands right now, like if you try to like if you try to like make something independent, like it usually just gets crushed by force, and that's like and it's it's all under the books, it's all clean. You know what I mean? It's just like you know that's just allowed by our society, and and we don't have the language, um, we don't have the like the like language to to tell people that like hey, how are you gonna like how do homeless people fix their situation if if every month on the month all of their belongings are destroyed and they have to start over again from square one like you know what i mean like and if but if if it's like mm -hmm. i don't know like if you again if there's like a huge protest and it changes that or it brings the light to it people see that and go hey that's fucked and then they go wow i won't i i won't support anybody who's this cruel to the homeless ever again and then all of a sudden you've made room for people to start actually building their own communities and building their own political power, which could at very, very realistically at someday, um, you know, manifest into something much stronger. You know, um, I just think that like w at the moment, like the left is uh, in a pretty weak spot in a lot of ways and that most of our work right now is going to be education and winning the I the battle of ideas. Oh, no, the site chat went down. Uh, don't worry, chat site chat should be back soon do you see what i mean do you see what i'm saying uh, yeah 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 i i i'm i i in this might end up just being semantics and you know we might just agree at the end i just would consider something more like uh mutual aid as being something that's non-electoral mm -hmm. um and to say we only need programs such as mutual aid is you know like the way forward instead of dual power in the sense of giving power to the state compared to something that is not but that like i said this might just be you know 
yeah. one of our understandings of words might be different from yeah the other. a little bit i think that's definitely happening a little bit like i don't think we're like deeply in disagreement i'm happy that we got to talk of course um but like i don't think we're deeply in disagreement um i do think uh like i think that mutual aid is a very broad term um and i would love uh i would love for us to come up with more like you know, drill down and come up with more specific terms instead of just using mutual aid as like a broad catch-all. Um, but I do think that there are ways of building dual power um, that start with stuff like mutual aid and can br uh, can literally grow into really, really powerful structures. Um, like I think, when I think of this, I think of like um, a lot of stuff that's happened within the LGBTQ community, um, which is like, you know, things that start as like charities or mutual aid funds and become functionally um, public institutions that aren't state controlled at all. And like, there's a lot of these where I live here. Like, I mean, there's a lot of these that aren't state controlled in any way, shape or form. They started as like loose collectives of queer people just trying to find their way. And then they slowly over time accumulated local power, um, political influence, money, um, and, you know, sometimes land. And then they became their own, their own institution that, that is not a part of the state, but serves a purpose it, like a literal, like what we would understand there, like in a theoretical sense to be a syndicate. And I think that that's like pretty cool. I think we can do that for sure. Um, but it's it's really complicated. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I think these things have to be structured really carefully. Otherwise, they could fall to um, they could fall to like you know being becoming compromised by capitalism or whatever. I think that happens sometimes. You know, like a charity starts out with a good intention, and slowly, you know, because it's structured as a 5013c corporation ends up you know corrupting itself because it was structurally designed in like a poor way um but i think that if we get smarter about how we design our uh these institutions these things have the power to fill needs that the state isn't and there and also therefore gain political power that that the state cannot access like again sorry to ramble about this but it's something i'm really interested in but like imagine if there was like a um imagine just like we get like an angles okay so like a really rich like angles type person like a super rich person who's just like super passionate about anarchism or whatever and is willing to like fund uh like a like a bunch of uh a bunch of like democratically run uh co-op food kitchens or something like that and those food kitchens are really successful and the government just isn't feeding people and so people just come to those food kitchens and they start supporting those food kitchens um, and then those food kitchens become more than just food kitchens. They become places where lots of people come to buy, uh, to, to buy and get food. You know, maybe it's like you get free food, but you can also contribute money if you have it. So people just start to use them instead of going to apply to snap. All of a sudden there's a institution that has been built by the people, uh, or, you know, with literally by the people, one of which who probably had access to some resource or another, but that's just a reality. Some people have access to resources and others don't. Um, and then that can be structurally turned into something that stands on its own. And then the people who benefit from that don't give a shit. Like, why would they need to go? Why would they need to go and and file a, a 200 page document to get snap when they could just go to their local uh, anarchist kitchen? that gives them food for free and that they have a good time and there's music and and they talk about politics and they help each other out and then they organize in their communities and fight back against you know and could grow from there do you see what i mean like i think we i think a lot of times we get stuck in uh in a sort of binary of of like oh it's either uh liberal uh electoralism or uh you know uh red orchestra choir uh kalashnikov tanks kind of stuff you know yeah um this, this like co-op style though that that's non-electoralism and then having power to the state is electoralism i i i strongly believe in dual power because you know that's the most important you know if you if you can have you know as much power as possible you know you can keep things in check yeah, I agree with you, but you, you you surely must recognize that right now the state does have power. Like, that's a fact. 
It's not whether we like it or not. They have power. Um, it's backed up by massive force, and they will use that force in a lot of case, in many many cases. So it's not just a matter of us wanting it. It's just that like sometimes it's just a matter of fact that there is somebody who's holding the power, and that person needs to be pressured or or replaced or whatever in order to break free that power to yank the power out of their hands one way or another and i would advocate for peaceful pro approaches to that because i think they're more effective in the modern the modern era but i certainly don't think that's the the be all end all of of political uh engagement if that makes sense like the point is is like i advocate for people to uh to uh wrest power back from unjust institutions by whatever means they can and whatever means are most effective. And I happen to believe that the most effective way is sometimes to realize that you don't get to vote for uh, whether, you know, you, you're not necessarily gonna have a vote on a ballot about uh, like voter suppression, but that doesn't mean you can't go straight to the person who's going to be make who's going to be signing the bill about voter suppression and make them make them feel horrible about it make them in, make it impossible for them to actually sign that thing without dooming their own career you see what i mean anyway i think that's the core of our disagreements we kind of use the term differently but i rec i opened this segment by pointing out that everyone seems to use the term electoralism differently so yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. Uh did you want to did you want to drop any memes to the chat? Uh not really. Just uh you know, keep your eyes on the media, that's all. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh absolutely. I mean, and uh and uh keep your eyes and your and your donos on the good media. There you go. <laughs> All right. Listen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Have a have a good day. I'll talk to you soon. See you around. See, or, you. see you in chat, really. Absolutely. Bye, table knife. Bye bye.